that. Hey, I want to talk to you guys about my first time Apple Vision Pro experience. I went to the demo in Delaware, which was pretty cool, and I put the headset on, and the first thing that I experienced was uh, just a real impressive level of detail in that headset. It was, it was really cool. And so I was glad to try on the demo. Guy came, Bruce helped me out. He was really energetic, but I was impressed at how tailored and detailed the demonstration was. Like this is a must try experience for everybody. Uh, one of the ones that really stood out to me was Keynote, where you're like standing up in front of an audience presenting from a stage. Now I've done this in VR before, but there was something about it, the empty auditorium turning around and looking back at the screen behind me and I could see the presentation as I clicked on with my equivalent of a mouse pointer. Uh, but in that case, it was just my eyes and my fingers, which was effortless, just like truly effortless. And that was really fantastic just to kind of see how well engineered Apple's ecosystem is and where VR is going. Now I know they call it spatial computing, but I'm gonna to continue to refer to it as just simply VR. All right, let me talk about the pros really quickly. So first off, the spatial environments are really astounding. You can tell they're 8K, they really pop out, they can wrap around you, and that's just, it's gorgeous. And I think it's the kind of thing that I would really appreciate just to be able to step into, just for a little bit, bit of mental peace. Would I use it day to day? Probably not so much. But using the digital crown to kind of swap into that environment is really nice but I preferred just being out. I really like the pass-through of cameras. I like being able to see the shadows dropped from the menus around and really just clicking my fingers, no matter where they were, with just a simple pinch was super easy. Resizing windows, all the kind of stuff that, that Apple Vision Pro brings is very exciting for the future because it sets a bar, which is nice. Now I spoke about Keynote, which is a lot like a thing you do in the Toastmasters Public Speaking Club. The other thing that was really amazing was eye tracking. Eye tracking was largely accurate at about 90%, I'd say, precision. And the pinch was almost effortless. I almost never had to worry about my hand position, which I don't understand at all. I don't know how they engineered that. It doesn't seem to be something that, that should be able to work that effortlessly, like right out of the box. The other thing is, encountering against like Quest 3, um, 8K screens look surprisingly sharp. I mean, really sharp visuals that were like near retina level. Now the cost of it is 3,500 US dollars down here, which equates to about 4,800 Canadian. They're about to sell for 5,000 Canadian plus tax, which would probably be an extra, oh God, dare I, dare I think 600 or 800 on top. So it's about a grand cheaper in Canadian dollars to purchase it down here if I wanted to. The big question is, do I want to? Well, I have to say it did feel like a full fat VR experience and it's something that I am really keen for in the next version. The weight of the headset did feel off, even with the dual loop band as the new default, I suppose, for these demos, it didn't feel balanced. In fact, it had a bit of a swimmy feel to it, a little bit like some headsets that haven't got the balance quite right. And in the front end, it felt almost like there was a loose rotating gyro in the front end. It was a really bizarre feel. And I think that was the lenses, which are actually mechanized and can mechanically adjust on the fly to match your IPD as it adjusts on the fly, which is really strange, but it also is meant to help you with things like motion sickness, for example. Um, so those are things that I didn't know going into the demo. And I, I really was impressed stepping away. Like I, I was reaching for my wallet and saying, how can we possibly do this? And it was something that I was really keen on, on trying to do. I thought that would be super cool. Okay, let's talk about some of the negatives. Uh, the weight was, was definitely noticeable, but it wasn't overblown. It wasn't like I would have a problem with it in the first maybe 20 to 30 minutes. But I do think that an hour would kind of be tops for me with the headset as it's currently configured. Which isn't that difference from like Quest Pro, which I recently sold off. Now, aside from the kind of funny swimmy feeling to the balance because of the internal mechanisms that are inside, I would say that it was a beautiful design. Uh, the front face is more translucent than I'd expected. In other words, you can see the cameras like plain as day as if the front glass was, well, it is, it's fully transparent. And um, 
I wasn't able to test out, of course, like avatars, you don't get that customization. So I didn't get to see the personas in full action for me and how they've come along, but I feel like that would be enough for me even if I had it. Now in terms of the digital crown, dialing in and out felt like a lower sensitivity than I would wanted. And it's a pity, I hope that's adjustable because it felt like five full rotations were needed in that respect. Hi, Eska. Now, by the exit of the demo, I really wanted to buy one. Um, I was convinced by their experimental demonstration practice. It's just still too expensive versus what my personal use case allows. The, cur the curated demo that they had was um, both personal and customized to me. They fit the headset to me. The setup time was maybe five to eight minutes, but I really believe that Apple on that storefront are masters of selling the strengths of their product. And I was asked if I was gonna do more productivity or media consumption, and they, you know, curated uh, that experience to really both. And they showed me the PowerPoint equivalent, known, known as Keynote, some media, and the spatial capture, which was really actually quite impactful. And when you saw, you know, a mom and her kids blowing out a cake on a candle and some puppies, and all those kind of heart-rending moments, you imagined, you know, your own family in there and what it would be like to kind of capture that. Now, it's really a full ecosystem walled garden dive for me because I'd have to go and be an Apple guy again, really, if I wanted to use all these features, because I'm not gonna walk around doing spatial capture with an Apple Vision Pro on my head. No, I'd, I'd want an iPhone, right? I'd want a modern iPhone. And so the all-in price for me isn't just 5,000 Canadian or 6,000 Canadian. It's probably upwards really ranging toward about 10 grand. So the question is, is tomorrow's technology plus some comfort problems really worth 10K right now in version one? And my opinion is it's not. So what I'm gonna to recommend to people is don't buy Apple Vision Pro, wait for V2 or V3. It's kind of where I expect it to be, but I'll say I'm more smitten, I'm more into the device now and the engineering is just gorgeous. It's really great. I mean, some of those experiences were, were a little bit mind boggling in places. And I definitely had multiple wow moments in the headset from the resolution and the kind of sharpness of, of the display, the shadows laying on desks, the fact that you could place movable objects in physical space and then leave them there. Um, the actual headset on off process and the puck battery that's only like 3000 milliamp hours, but feels like a 20 milliamp hour anchor battery, I don't understand that. Why is it so bloody heavy? And the connection to the headset and the fact that it's full glass, those just scare me. I've got a full glass phone and I've had it in a protector since day one and I'm not a protector guy. I believe once it's engineered right, you shouldn't have to protect it unless you're really a Butterfingers or something like that. So I don't know, all glass front end, extreme price point, back into the Apple ecosystem for a now Android fella. There's a lot of reasons that I can't say yes to that at the moment, but man, I want to. It's really a cool uh, use case. It's a great run of, um, it's, it's, it, just, it just was so cool for, so, for all the things that Apple do well, it does brilliantly in that space. Things are wide and panoramic and detailed and sharp, and it all just worked and it all works effortlessly. Um, at least most of the time, from what I could tell from the demo environment. My recommendation to everybody is go book a 30 minute demo. It's very easy to do. Find your local location, especially with things opening up in Canada, in the UK, go try this. Because you may not get so excited that you wanna buy it, but it'll definitely get you excited in the way that Apple's excited about the future and where we're going. And the best part about that is with Meta and with Apple head to head in this competitive environment, well, Meta's UX had better get better and Apple's price had better improve. And so these two are gonna level each other a little bit. And two or three years from now, and VR is gonna be in every home. Those are my thoughts. Zim out. <laughs> Look at that too. This is a recording, right? It is a recording. Eska, can you sit over there, please? Are you okay? Can I ask you?
Yeah. Do you like headsets? I like BOGO too. You like BOGO? Yeah. I want to go back home and play with BOGO. You like BOGO? Like... Yeah, BOGO. BOGO waiting for me.